Now it's going to come to a stage where your hub bearings are likely to need a little bit of attention. Now most modern wheels luckily have cartridge bearings fitted, which make the process slightly easier in my opinion for the home mechanic. And in this case, just check out how old the logo is on this. This is a DT Swiss hub, although it was actually a Huji branded one, that's how old it is. It's about 20 years old. The bearings finally need some attention despite going through a number of rims along the way. So today, let's take a look at how I'm gonna remove and reinstall some fresh new bearings to keep me rolling for a little bit longer. So it's very likely you are in fact going to need some special tools for the job and in this case on this DT Swiss hub I have got a variety of bits here. Uh, now do check in with your manufacturer to make sure that you've got all of the correct bits and that you don't get halfway through and then realise oh I haven't got a ring nut removal tool for instance. So just make sure you're in a good state of play. Now firstly I'm going to actually need to remove the cassette from the free hub body and if you're unsure about how to do that there's a link to a video in the description beneath which will explain exactly how to do that process. Then with my little axle vise I'm going to have to remove the end caps which is important to be able to release and open up that hub for us. Now in this case I'm actually going to remove the non-drive side end cap first so I'm going to clamp it up inside of the axle vise and then yeah, pull that one off and then it's simply a case of removing the drive side one. Now, if you're unsure about anything, actually lay out the components in the order in which you take them off. That way it's gonna make reassembling a lot easier. Uh, also, if you've got a smartphone, perhaps take pictures as you go along. That way you've got memento even for Instagram. Now, if you're not lucky enough to have an axle vise, what you can do, which is a slight workaround, although not officially recommended by any, any manufacturer, is to get an old quick release skewer, insert it into one end, and then basically angle it in such a way that you're touching the back end of the other axle cap and then give it a sharp blow with a hammer and that will come off no problem. Now it's just a case of actually removing the free hub from the hub shell itself. Uh, sometimes they can require a bit of a firm tug but luckily this one came off really easily. Uh, some manufacturers though they do put free hubs on in a different method so just bear that in mind when removal and if in doubt actually check in with them for the correct method. Now the next step is actually quite specific to this model of hub or other hubs that have a ring nut fitted. Um, now you are going to require a special tool for this, in this case a ring nut insulation and removal tool. Now I would advise actually putting this into a vise first before sliding the wheel down on top of it so that those two splines engage perfectly. The reason being a vise is going to give you quite a lot of torque to actually be able to undo that ring nut inside of it. Uh, when you're looking at the wheel from above, you're going to be turning the wheel in an anti-clockwise direction, which is then going to loosen that in turn. Now, at first, you may well feel a little bit of resistance, but that's perfectly normal, and then it's just going to simply come out of there nice and easy. But if you haven't got a vise, get yourself a pretty long adjustable spanner, or if not, an adjustable spanner with an extension on the end, and put the wheel down on the floor and apply quite a bit of torque, pushing that downwards, so in this direction, so you're loosening that ring nut. The next step is to remove the bearing which is inside the non-drive side of the hub shell. How am I going to do that? Well, I've actually got to force the axle out, which in turn is going to push that bearing out. So I've got here an axle protector, which obviously does the job that the name suggests. Put that in, and then with a few sharp blows of the hammer here, that will come out the other side. Simple as that. So now we've removed the non-drive side bearing, we're going to want to remove the drive side one. So, this is how the axle is normally found inside of the hub. What we want to do is flip it so that this part here is actually pushing against the bearing race to remove that from the hub shell. So, simply a case, pressing it back inside, making sure it's in line, putting your axle protector back in, and then again, repeating the process, give it a few sharp blows, and that bearing will come out. Now that you've removed your bearings and your axle, make sure that hub shell is nice and clean inside. It will make the job of putting the new bearings in a little bit easier, as well as keeping it all nice and clean too. If you've got some threads in there like I have, also make sure that they are nice and cleaned out. 
Now after you've cleaned out that hub shell, what I'd suggest to do next is actually clean all of the components that you've already removed. So do one piece at a time so that you're not disrupting the order at all, as there's nothing worse than basically trying to put a jigsaw back together when you're not maybe 100% sure which part goes where. So now everything is nice and shiny and clean, we want to put some grease inside of the hub shell so those bearings go in a little bit easier. If you have got some threads inside too, make sure they're greased up so that everything can be installed easily and importantly removed easily in years to come. So now it's a case of reassembling the hub and putting new fresh bearings in place. But how are we going to do that? Well, I've got two specific drifts for this bearing size and I'm going to use a vise as well as a rubber mallet again to actually knock those bearings into place. But it's not a case of knocking, I have seen people do that in the past. This is actually precision, believe it or not. But before we do that, let's actually grease up the axle so that the bearings have got somewhere nice to actually sit on. You don't need to put a lot on there, just enough for where the bearing in a race is gonna sit. So I'm going to place a bearing over the long end of the rear axle because we're going to do the drive side bearing first. Place that into that drift. Put the actual wheel down on top so that it's lined up well. And now with the other drift, you want to put that on top of the axle. You are going to know when it's in correctly as it it will be sat perfectly flat inside. Then, with your hammer, the soft face of course, you're just gonna to wanna to hit that so that that bearing presses firmly into the drive side of the hub shell. So on this particular hub, now that we've fitted the drive side bearing, we're not gonna fit the non-drive side bearing just yet. Instead, we're gonna refit that ring nut. Before we fit that, we actually need to put the shim or the washer over the axle and onto that bearing. Give it a little coating of grease before you do it. Now there is a recess on the ring nut, so that's important to take note of. Of course, you will already know that because you laid out with your components as you remove them. You did remember to do that, right? Anyway, the reason for that recess is so that, that washer you've just put in can sit inside of that. So the recess needs to go in first. Give the threads though a good coating of grease so that they go in nice and easily. Now to tighten up that ring nut, uh, you can put the tool back in the vise and actually tighten the wheel on that way, or alternatively, just use an adjustable spanner and do it up as tight as you can by hand. Uh, the reason being, the force generated whilst pedaling through the free hub and the ratchet system, you're actually gonna be tightening that as you ride. So in effect, there's no chance of it coming undone. Now it's a case of fitting that hub seal back on. Now again, not all hubs have this, but this one is important on the DT Swiss hub I'm working on. So I'm gonna place that in position. It's important that the metal side actually goes in first, leaving the rubber seal facing outwards. And then with a special hub seal mounting tool, I'm gonna to put that in there, and then press it into position, again using a shim and hitting it into place. Now we are nearly done. It's just time to put in that non-drive side bearing. So again, just give it a coating of grease just to help it slide in a little bit easier. And also just helping protect it from the elements a little bit because we all know how bad the weather can be, particularly if you live in the UK. Now with the wheel supported and held in place, you're gonna to wanna to push that axle slightly out and then drop the bearing onto it so that it sits onto that mounting surface. And then, with your drift, simply tap that into place so that it sits down there into the hub shell. Now it's time to reassemble the free hub, and it's important to not overload it with grease, because if you do, it can in fact block up the ratchets or pulls and essentially turn your free hub into a fixed hub. I know someone who did it and uh, the results were pretty catastrophic. So in the case of this one, I've actually got some DT Swiss special grease quite a cool name. I don't know what makes it so special, but it is, and I have been advised to use it, so I'm gonna do just that. So that special grease, I'm going to apply it carefully into the actual teeth there, inside of that ring nut driver. Get enough in there, it helps actually, if you've got a brush or something in there to actually push it in. But it will work its way around, so there's no need to worry too much. Next is to reassemble everything in the reverse order in which it came off. So the axle spacer is going to go on next. 
Make sure that goes on and butts all the way up against the bearing race on the inside. And then on goes the spring. And here you want the largest end of the spring to actually go on first. So that's drive side. Now the ratchets are gonna go on next. They are sided specifically. So one side is flat and the other one is serrated as you can see. We're gonna to wanna to put the flat side on first. So that's the flat side up against that spring which you've just put on. Give the ratchet itself though, just a gentle covering in grease to make sure that it's doing its job. Not too much, like I said, because you certainly do not want to overload these parts. And then you want to put in the other ratchet. Now this ratchet fits in the reverse to the previous one. So you want the actual serrated side to meet the serrations of the other ratchet. Uh, that's gonna create an interference fit. And basically that's gonna allow you to get the torque through the hub. Then we're gonna to wanna to put on the other spring. This time it's the narrowest end on first so that the big side actually sits in there against the free hub body. So now you've done all of that. Yes, we are nearly at the final hurdle. It's just a case of putting on those axle end caps. I always just put, again, a dab of grease inside of them, just to prevent them from getting stuck for when you next want to remove them. So it's just a case of actually sliding them on pressing them into place. So now it's just a case of putting on your cassette and you're good to go again. But before I leave you, I know, I know, you're all saying, what about that free hub sound? And I'm not gonna disappoint you, so here we go. I do like that. And we've had lots of people actually mention in the comments about how good those original Huji hubs did sound. So there you have it. Sounds good, doesn't it? Now, those bearings that I just removed were in there for about 20 years. So I'm hoping that I'm not gonna have to replace those ones till about 2038. Keep my hands nice and clean then. And now do remember as well to like and share this video with your friends. So if someone out there you know who's got rough bearings, get them to have a look at this. It's not that tough after all. And also check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Get yourself an apron so you don't get your GCN hoodie messy. Now for another great video, this one how to service your free hub with Psy, click just down here.